Welcome to the Daily Dose of Coast podcast. We deliver Daily Coast of Wild to our subscribers and fans. We're in the heart of Savannah at the Sugar City Studio, and we have the pleasure of having Heather Young with us today. Heather, welcome to the Sugar City Studio and Daily Dose of Coast. Well, thank you for having me today. I'm honored. So um, you're an artist, obviously, and so you um, and I met at the Arts on the Coast, and I saw some of your work there, and I thought, wow, this is great. We've got to have her in here. So uh, you're also friends with Joy. I am. And we had Joy here uh, a few weeks back, and so she nominated you as well. So thanks for coming. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your art story. Okay. Well, um, I always wanted to be an artist, and uh, I moved around a lot as a kid. I was in 10 different schools by the time I graduated wow. from yeah <laughs> from high school. And so art was like a constant for me. You know, when you had uncertainty in your life, that was one thing that was that was always there. So at about 10th grade, I knew exactly where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. And um, so I came to SCAD in between my junior and senior year of, of high school for the Rising Star program. And it kind of got my feet wet. And I said, this is, this is exactly, I'm on the right path. And uh, came back to SCAD full time and got my degree in illustration. So that was kind of the start of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, once I graduated, I started with commercial illustration for Skirt Magazine and um, started using my work on wedding paper goods mm -hmm. around 2008. So um, that was kind of my background. Now I'm diving more into the fine art side of things, which is um, kind of like getting to have my cake and eat it too. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so with SCAD, yeah, I mean, obviously there's huge, tons of majors. Why? illustration or what brought you or moved you towards that well initially I wanted to illustrate children's books that was kind of the direction that I wanted to go in but I think I was kind of like um, most college students where you just didn't really know I knew I was a creative type and mm -hmm. I wanted to have some sort of direction with that so um, if I had it to do all over again I'd probably double major with photography just mm -hmm. so that I could have that that skill set in photographing my work now <laughs> yep. okay. so um, Obviously, you love trees. If, love if you trees. go to your Instagram or your any of your uh, social media, you see a lot of trees. And you started illustrating trees, right, before I painting? I did. I started with pen and ink, and a lot of that was um, instant gratification. You know, I can sit down in a night and, and draw a tree and feel like I accomplished something. Mm -hmm. And as a mom to two young children, you know, that's it, sometimes it feels good to just create something and to not have to struggle over it for three weeks because you've got other things on your plate. Um, so I started out illustrating, I, I'm especially drawn to moss draped live oaks. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, that is a symbol of home. I'm from here and I spent a lot of years living away from here. So, um, to me, it's just documenting my home and I draw a lot of, I'm fascinated by all trees, but the live oak is just, there's something, um, magical about it that I don't, I think I'll paint them probably till the day I die. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, when, when I photograph and I see these trees, it's like they have a soul. Uh, they have their own personality, you know. Right. And to capture that illustration-wise and then uh, right. with your oils, it must be pretty satisfying. And Very. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, and you know, they're two different techniques. So the pen and ink work, I kind of feel like I have multiple personalities. So pen and ink is um, nurtures my OCD side. I can be very technical and very precise and I can execute something in a short amount of time. Um, the oil paintings are more of a labor of love mm -hmm. and uh, an exploration of light. I like to see how the moss shines through the trees at different times of day. So um, there's certain trees that I drive by all the time and I, I keep waiting till the right time of day to stop, pull over and photograph it with the light shining through just right. So the oils are, um, it's a subtractive technique that I use with oil and uh, Basically, I apply a wash to the entire surface, mm -hmm. and then I use erasers to erase out to the underpainting. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have to loosen up a little bit and let the painting kind of take on a life of its own, which is the counterbalance to the OCD of being able to precisely execute something with a drawing. Right. Well, it gives it a very translucent feel as well. You kind of almost seeing right through the tree to the to the canvas. Yeah, it's a, oh, the linen. You use linen. What's no, I actually linen? use illustration board. Okay. I do. I, I'm not a big fan of painting on canvas. I don't like the the texture of it. Mm -hmm. So I like the smooth um, surface of a heavyweight illustration board that can hold a lot of washes. Mm -hmm. um, but my heart is in painting, and I I'm making more and more time for that. So it's um, 
it's an interesting journey. And I think, you know, I could paint the same tree five times mm -hmm. and come up with a different composition, mm -hmm. especially with the live oaks. Um, and it's just a, you know, we're just so blessed. I've lived in, I lived outside of Chicago in the cornfields, you know, oh, wow. flat land, <laughs> no trees. Now they have some great weeping willows up there that we don't have down here. So once in a while, you'll see a willow in my collection. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So um, you mentioned when we were talking about full plain air, do you do a lot of that or? I'm starting to do more of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little labor intensive uh, to bring the oils out there and to do the watches. Um, I've done it. Um, but it, usually if I'm going to do plein air, I bring my pen and inks and some watercolors and I do some studies that then I bring back into the studio and turn it into to oil paintings. Awesome. So you have an example. I do. So, Beautiful oaks. Yes, this is... Um, this is on the estate grounds of Ossabaw Island. So it's a myriad of oaks. And I've kind of changed my color palette here lately. I've been going a little more monochromatic. Um, but I like that it's, you know, first of all, it's a great barrier island off our Georgia coast. And um, just the the composition that the oaks make out there, it's just a beautiful, if you get a chance to go to Ossabaw, you have to go. Um, so coastal blue colors, kind of limiting my palette. And um, this one will actually be available at the Holiday Artist Collective at photo point gallery in richmond hill so this is the first anybody gets to see of this okay. i haven't shown anyone even joy done again at photo point has not seen it I it's a premiere it. <laughs> so um yeah so you'll see three or four of these pieces at that show which is um december 3rd it's it, very min minimalistic but also a lot of detail i mean it's just like a ah it's, it's really cool well thank you i'm a, i am fascinated with the idea of abstraction and um Oh, that, that's a happy spot for it, Brian. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> um, I'm fascinated with the idea of abstraction. And uh, it's interesting because I've had some people commenting lately that my style is changing a little bit. So, you know, you don't notice it when you're working so closely with things. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely getting more linear with my work. Yep. And um, so I like the idea of, you know, when I draw something, it's very detailed. But when I paint it, I'm taking away some of that. And, you know, how can you still represent the subject matter um, get it across, but add that abstraction mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And it's rhythmic too, with just with the, you know, just the lines and it's, it's almost like it's moving a little bit as well. Thank you. Well, it's, um, it's rhythmic when I paint it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get into that zone. I know you're an artist too. And it's like, sometimes you get in that zone and you know, the phone could ring and you wouldn't hear it. So that's yeah. where I'm at when I'm really painting and focused. Awesome. Well, uh, what gives you ideas? What gives you inspiration? How do you, are you the type that, you know, I'm going to paint no matter how I feel or mm -hmm. do you have to kind of feel it? That's a tough question. Cause, um, you know, I firmly believe I've got two young boys at home. Um, 20 minutes is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I might not have time to do a full wash on my painting in 20 minutes, but maybe I can go into the studio and pack up some note cards or mats and prints or, um, so sometimes, you know, if you want to make it in art, it does become, it's, at some point it becomes work. Mm -hmm. um, now to be able to go and create, if I'm not in, you know, to paint, paint, if I'm not in that right frame of mind, I mean, you know, you're just going to produce pure garbage. You're going to yeah. want to burn it. So, <laughs> um, you know, so you do have to, it's kind of balancing both. Yeah. For me, uh, even if I don't feel it, uh, if I'd start, if I know I have time, I could set time and I'm able to, just kind of get into it then I, the feeling mostly comes sometimes it doesn't and then i just bail and do something else right but i think it is that discipline that you have to have if you really want to produce and and find new things to to explore well and you know i i used to get very caught up with the planning of a piece and i had a, a professor at scad that told me you know an artist thinks with their brush so instead of getting so worked up in your head about how this is going to play out, just put your put your pencil to the paper and start drawing something. And half the time, you, know, you start that 20 minutes of opportunity, and the next thing you know, it's been three hours. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of years uh, focused on drawing instead of uh, painting because it was I was able to kind of conquer that. But, you know, the reality is, is when you really want to do something, you make time for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now that I've picked my brushes back up the past couple of years, it's just very... Um, you know, you find ways to work that into your schedule because you need it. You know, you have to have that creative, creative time. Well, awesome. Well, it's beautiful and we're excited to see what else uh, is coming up in the horizon. Well, so it. let everybody know where they can find your work. Okay. Well, you can find my work locally at the Grand Bohemian Gallery inside the mansion on Forsyth Park. You can also find it at Location Gallery, Shop SCAD, and Photo 
Photo Point Gallery in Richmond Hill. Oh, in the Arts on the Coast Gallery. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then uh, on on the line where they can find you? Uh, you can find me at flyyoungstudio.com, and that's also Fly Young Studio on Instagram, Facebook. Okay, that was another question I was going to ask. Where did Fly Young come from? <laughs> okay, Fly Young came from, I mean, obviously Young is my maiden name. And uh, when I was graduating from college, I just had this idea that you just have to jump out of the nest and, and go with it. And so, um, you know, it was initially a play on my name, but also it just kind of a motivation to mm -hmm. get out there and just do it. Just do it. Just, just fly. do it. Fly. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and uh, we'll wish you the best. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate it. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Elevated Coastal Productions and Bo Dossi Ruffin for being a part of Daily Dose of Coast. You can find Daily Dose of Coast uh, on all the social media networks and at dailydoseofcoast.com. Uh, if you want to go straight to shop, it's dailydoseofcoast.shop. Thank you.